my thoughts are he would win the title with Arsenal. I think he would almost guarantee it. I think everywhere he's gone, he's won titles. The levels of his general play are so poor, not just today, but in general. He's almost like a League Two player. Part of the reason Haaland is such a good centre forward is obviously that it's his work off the ball, his positioning off the ball. You still have to get there. You have to put yourself in the position to score these goals. I actually agree with Rokino. I don't think his general play is that amazing. Arsenal and Manchester City ruined everyone's weekend with a boring <laughs> game of football. It absolutely killed me. But for the Liverpool fans... Great weekend. Great weekend. We're here at another episode of Football Trending and I am joined by Ben Hook. I'm also joined by my fellow Top of the League companion. Hello, mate. Mr. Joel. You right? How are you feeling today? Yeah, Top good, of the man. League. Top of the League, yeah. There's still lots of football to go, though, isn't there? It's hot. I was going to say it's hotting up. The Arsenal City game didn't hot it up. But <laughs> the, the points the points now is great. Like having a three-team yeah. title race is... Yeah. It, we haven't had it for years and years, so I'm excited for it. But Arsenal City was one of the worst games of football for a Dreadful. fair while. We sent the boys from Manchester down to Vox Manchester City versus Arsenal. And we had some fun questions. Starting off with how many goals would you score in a Manchester City team. Personally, I would hit double digits, <laughs> but that's just me. Let's get into the VT. How many goals do you think you could score in that City team if you had a whole Premier League season? Loads, loads and loads. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can I have a number? How much do you think? 50, I don't know. I've you think you could score 50 goals? Yeah, of course I could. If you watch the lower leagues of football, like even some the league players are better than me, a lot better than me, and they score no goals. Um, uh, and some, some League Two players could play in the City side and score zero goals. Like, the levels are just so far and away. Three, three or four. Absolutely none. I, I could get a few just standing yeah. around at the front, up front. Do you like it? I, I think so, yeah. You know, you get in the right position. You can, as you said, they're getting players in positions where all they have to do is just tap it in and it's easy. Do you think people are a little bit too quick to dismiss how good Haaland actually is on that front? Absolutely. Just because he plays for City, they don't get the right sort of, the right sort of respect. Joel, I'm going to start with you. How many goals would you score? I'd be absolutely made up with like three. Three is ambitious, yeah, mate. I, I think it's more likely one. Guys, and, that, and that'll be a pen. <laughs> guys, we're very yeah, we're underselling ourselves here, lads. I, think no, if I, you... I, I don't think we are underselling ourselves. I, I think he's absolutely spot on. I think the, the chasm, it's very easy to sit and watch City not score at the weekend. Absolute chasm in quality. These the levels these players are at. I'd be I'd be made up with with a couple, I've got to say. I think if you exclude penalties, you'd be you'd have to be very lucky to get one. Yeah. Because the, the point that the geezer made about um League Two strikers, like Roy Keane, mate, we need to get him in for clicks here because he yeah. would do well for our website team. But he said, what was it? The levels of his general play are so poor, not just today, but in general. In terms of in front of goal, he's the best in the world, but his general play is really poor. He's almost like a League Two player. Do you know how mental that is to say? That begs the question, how many goals would he score in League Two? Oh, mate, he'd score a hatful in League Two. But it's yeah. interesting, like him making, a, like the guy making the point where it's like a League Two player might not score any goals. I think that is a valid opinion yeah. for someone to have. Like, an act, like a professional footballer getting paid a decent amount of money per week could still not go, still go into the City team and not score any goals. I think Oli Palmer plays for Wrexham and he said he'd score a hatful in this City team. But actually, I, mm. the more I watch Haaland this year, because I think City are slightly coming towards the end of this era of how good they are. Like the Pep era is sort of, not tailing off, but... They're not they're not as good as last year's City team, I don't think. And it's because they're sort of getting to that age profile where it just passed their peak, just on the downward turn. They're still an incredible football team, but they haven't shown it this season where they've like shown that upward curve as early as they usually do. They might still win it, but I think I would be lucky to get one from open play. And it would have to be like super lucky, six yard box ball just mm. falls to me off some off like Keeper saves it and I just happen yeah. to be there. Because like the athleticism you have to have to be the first to that, a loose ball is also mad. That's the thing for me. And that's the thing that I think people that aren't City fans like to throw at Haaland. Part of the reason Haaland is such a good centre forward is obviously he has, he has a good natural instinct for finishing. But it's his work off the ball, his positioning off the ball. Lots of number nines will score plenty of goals in their careers that are five yard tap-ins. You still have to get there. You have to put yourself in the position to score these goals. I think it's funny because a couple of years ago, 
City were playing with Foden up front, De Bruyne is like both as false nines. And I wouldn't be able to quote him directly, but I'm relatively certain he would be the exact sort of person that'd be mm-hmm. like, they just need an out and out number yep. nine and now who does less in the build up and just scores America. goals. And now as soon as they've got the the best out and out number nine in the world, they're like, oh, he's not very good in that so in the build up, mm. is he? It's sort of like, you I, can't win I overall. I actually agree with Rokino. I don't think his general play is that amazing. There I are better players in general play for sure. Better strikers in, but in like, terms build of up. in terms of his role on the pitch and what he does as a centre forward, he's exceptional. You, you don't get the number of goals that he gets. It's the other thing, Roy Keane saying this after having sat and watched him for the last four seasons, both at Dortmund and City, score goal after goal after goal after goal. Like I said, it's it's click merchant rubbish. Yeah, it? it's got he knows be. what he's doing. He had that little smirk on his face, and also there's a bit of uh, history with the Harland. Oh and yes, Harlem family and yes. Roy Keane. So I think, and like Roy Keane has never publicly let that go. Yeah. So I think there's an element where he, Roy Keane, has been waiting for the perfect opportunity yeah. to have a little dig, dig because, it, like, over like we see him on the overlap and he's like funny. He has that. He has great storytelling ability and he's yeah, obviously played the game at like a ridiculously high level and very respected. But I think if you watch enough Sky Sports you should have worked out his game. Mm. And I think Roy Keane knows that he, he's he got a chance at a dig that will do big numbers and will like enhance his reputation at Sky. And then also, I reckon he still holds that grudge. He seems like someone that does hold grudges. If that's just his brand, and fair enough, but he does feel like, I think sometimes I look at him, I'm like, yeah, there was like a bit of a, like you see some of the tackles that he put in when he was, mm. when he was a player. He went into like, hurt yeah. people and like he he re- he ended that uh harlan's dad's career, career um, yeah, why do so, yeah. you um why do you agree with him so let's take like the harlan Keane family bias away and the feud away if you actually just look at what Keane said he actually makes so much sense because the way harlan kind of approaches the game he just doesn't like it's do you he's know what not I mean? necessarily interested in the build-up yeah but also he's not very like I'm a very, like, eye test merchant. Like, you have to agree, he doesn't look aesthetically pleasing on the pitch. Like, yeah, he, I, I he do, looks I powerful do. all the time, whereas whereas some players look, like, silky and I do just I do just think the eye test... There's lots of instances of footballers who've gone on to be incredibly successful, but haven't looked like they're Not the most aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. I, agree yeah. 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 I agree with that. And, like, his numbers, like, beg to differ with what I'm saying. That's why I think he's an amazing striker, but I actually agree with what um, Keane's saying, in the sense of like general build-up play, I don't think it's good. I think he's very like, his general build-up play, he likes to stay out of it, but also a lot of his general build-up play is like, he just chats shit to the opponent. Like if you notice him, he just but, loves- But to quote Roy Keane, that's his job. He's a yeah. centre forward. It's not It's not his job to be involved, to collect the ball in his own half, start, start the move, do everything. His job as a six foot, four centre forward is to get on the end of it to score goals and to do it in the final third. You yeah. know, when you play for a Manchester City team that is so big on build-up play, that kind of questions like... But you've he... got everyone else in that team doing the build-up play. Yeah. He doesn't need to. It's such a talented squad with so much depth. Why Why does Haaland need to be involved in every... I, I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. I nah, I, I do agree. I think it's like... Um, I agree with Joel, sorry. Um... <laughs> I think he's just there to do a job. Pep slightly adapted the way that he's played and it's not as fluid as it was in previous years. And it, it, last year it was like, it just seemed to click instantly, but they also had players around Haaland mm. that sort of contributed at this point last year. Like Gundogan was vital in this run in last year and they've lost him. Um, but yeah. I don't think there's a lot of players either, just generally, that have ever been able to do absolutely everything. Yeah, he's still the I, Premier I, League's you, top you goal scorer. You don't judge a centre-back on their ability to score goals. You judge yeah. them on doing their job in their area yeah. of the pitch. Yeah, if, the, if this is like a bad season or like he's as good as a League Two striker in certain areas, he's still the Premier League's top goal scorer in a bad yeah. season or in an overhyped season or whatever it is. So, And in that case, I'd love to be at the level of a League Two striker. If that, yeah, if that's what true. he is. It's very interesting because on the flip side, Paul Merson came out a few months ago and said Haaland wouldn't even get 60 goals in League Two. So it's very interesting. Wouldn't how even get wouldn't 60 e- goals. Wouldn't wouldn't even even no, but that's what I'm That's saying. Like, it, it's very easy to like... M- Paul Merson made a bold claim that Haaland needs service to prosper. 
But then doesn't kind of most strikers do. Yeah, yeah and it's a good job he gets it then, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Luckily he plays for Man City. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting one. But I personally think I would get five to ten goals in that city team. Ben, how I'll maybe you? tuck away a penalty or two. Yeah. Joe, I, I'm sticking in the the one to three area. Um you'd you'd be so lucky yeah. to get a chance to score one. And even then the pressure would just be you'd sky it. You'd and also I'm a, I'm a bad footballer as yeah. well. So to, to be fair, one, yeah. Another big talking point of this week's games was the midfield battle between Rice and Rodri. There's been a lot of comparisons. So we asked the Manchester City and the Arsenal fans who they thought was the better player. It's kind of obvious who will say who. Declan Rice or Rodri? Rodri. Rice all day. Fucking unbelievable footballers. Taking nothing away from Rodri. Rodri is an unbelievable baller. You can't tell that. You you can't you can't say he's not. There isn't a fan in the country of football that doesn't appreciate what he does on a football pitch. Bringing Rice into our team, and you see the strength he gives us and the interceptions he makes, second to none. No, it is Rodri. Rodri's world class. I, I'm not going to lie, but Rice will get there. Yeah. I mean, it's a matter of time, but Rodri is is world class. I'd have Rodri. I'm probably Rodri's biggest fan. I feel like he's the best player in the world currently. Um, but you can't deny Rice, he's so good in the end. I can't wait to watch him for England at the Euros, but yeah, I think Rodri just pips him. He does the dirty work of football well. Like, he's the reason we won the treble last year, yeah. and he is the sole reason. Without him, we would have been nowhere near. I'm a bit of a football nurse sometimes when watching a game. I love to watch a six. Like, they just dictate the whole play. Um, and for me, he just he's so good at just piecing defence to attack, yeah. and he'll just pop up with 10 goals in the air, which is just stupid. I do think Rodri's better right now, but Rice is younger. You know, he's got his ceilings way higher than Rodri's, and I think he's going to take over and be the best leader in the world for years to come. I'd rather have Rice for maybe the way we play, but Rodri for City, just the bollocks, isn't he? I just think he, he's just awesome. You know, he, he always comes good in the big games. Can't say any more than what he did in uh, Istanbul. You got to back him, Rice. Englishman, you know, he's one of our own. Um, yeah, Rice, all day. He was Irish for a game. No, 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 no. no. He's in an English shirt right now. He's our captain. Come on, we'll go for it. 50 caps. He's ours now. Rodri, he's much more composed and he's, he doesn't panic in a, in any given situation. I think he handles it quite well. Yeah, it's got to be Rice. Got to be Rice. Okay. Rice, because he can yes. dribble. He can dribble with a ball better than Rodri. Like, I think it's very Quite close. Rice, but yeah. there's that one attribute of dribbling that Rodri doesn't exactly have or yeah. doesn't show enough of. But Rice can full on take the ball, pick it up, and drive forwards and shift us into that next gear. The correct answer is obviously Rodri. It is, yeah. It, and also, the word ceiling in an in any debate about <laughs> who is better right now is pointless because I reckon I've got a pretty high ceiling. You know, if, <laughs> yeah. the potential is still there. If everyone just trains yeah. like a pro footballer. Yeah, if exactly. everyone was just like, live as like good as they're always going to be, then yeah. But I think what's interest, what I found interesting about asking this question was Calvin Phillips used to be in this discussion. Over the last couple of years, those sort of like side indoors moments where you, you, like decisions footballers make and move in club and how important it is to certain footballers' careers. Because um, like Rice has joined Arsenal, playing week in, week out, and at one point you would probably have said they were level pegging. You yeah. know, sort of, but all the big clubs wanted both of them, and it was like you either get one or the other. And Rice is this season. Rice has got into the debate with Rodri for yeah. sure. And Rodri is in his own league. Like some of the things he's, they said there, like 10 goals in a treble winning season for a yeah, defence midfielder. Huge, We're talking yeah. about Haaland can't do it all. Rodri sort of does yeah. do it all. Yeah. Um, and I don't think he's a bad shout for the best player in the world at all. I think well, I think, that, I think, I think he's in my top three best. Uh, current, right now, I, there is no one that I'd rather watch in terms of just a complete footballer. I think he is brilliant. Like cool, same as the geezer there, football nerd. But he just like brings it together. He's so... Once per game, or once or twice per game, City play a bit of football that always involves him out from the back. I'm just like, wow. Like, yeah. football shouldn't be this good. Like, these guys are basically robots. I think everyone in that VT had a point, had like a fair shout on either if they said Rice or Rodri. I think it's so close that everyone in that VT had a shout other than being the best player in the world. I think that was mm -hmm. a bit far off. But the Calvin Phillips stuff and you mentioning how like a decision or like a manager can affect your career in football. I think it is so huge. Yeah. And I've seen like being in and around the game, I've seen so many examples of like a manager kind of affecting a player's career to the point where like that one decision basically means they don't really play football again because now they back down the pecking yeah. order. Like, I had a friend mm. um, who played for Crystal Palace 
He made his first team debut. Who was the Dutch manager? Yes, he made his uh, first team debut under him. The next day he got sacked and he never ever saw first team again. Yeah. His career just went like, I don't want to be like, but his career just kind of shuffled back down. And moments like that shape someone's career. Like going back to Calvin Phillips, it's little moments. And a little bit of me feels sorry for him. But then he goes to West Ham and he kind of doesn't do justice. Or so. yeah. He started very, very badly. Yeah. And to be to be honest, he cuts the figure of someone who is very frustrated and yeah. probably knows that they aren't going to the Euros. I yeah. mean, yeah. You, you can't do what he did. Like not least to well, the one of your finger. own to your own fans, you know. It's just the, the the pressures of the game. You know the cameras are on you. You can't act like that. And to me, that that's a fella who is frustrated with himself. Maybe not necessarily regretting the choice that he, he's made to go to West Ham. I think it's the right decision. And I think, as we said on on the show last week, Southgate had that conversation with him. But he will be very unhappy with the start that he's made. The reaction to being called useless. <laughs> Occasionally, like, look, he's flipped the bird at him, and it's like it's a human response. Yeah, and but, occasionally, but it's, not, it's not a professional footballer's response. That's the thing. I occasionally, I'm just like, look, do you know what? Fair. Just you. Yeah. Whenever we see this human side of footballers, I think you respect them a little bit more, and you. It's just a reminder for fans, and occasionally you do need a reminder because I reckon the geezer that called him useless actually instantly was like. Ah, oh, yeah. Like, felt a bit of a mug and was just like, I am just abusing a guy who's it's, trying it, to do his yeah. best, like, yeah. for a team that I support. It's not great form slagging off your own players yeah. anyway. He had, was it Juventus that he could have went to? Yeah. So he could have went to Man City, sorry, West Ham or Juventus, but Gareth Southgate essentially said, you have to go to West Ham. And then when you start like that and you kind of just shove your England position out of the window, yeah. it's kind of like that frustration must have been built up because it's like after sound from his perspective it's so hard seeing Jared Bowen your teammates and also your friends from Manchester City yeah. go off and do England and I think mm. Jack Grealish said something like it was tough sitting at home mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when he didn't get picked it, it must be like that built up of stress and frustration where just like anything could just make him click yeah, and yeah. he just Clipped. I don't think he'll ever play for City again. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the 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 thing that he has on his side is that he is still relatively young. This won't mm. be the last international yeah. tournament that he's got an opportunity to mm. go to. But his next move off the end of this loan is going to be really important. As he said, he's going to want to make sure that he ends up with a manager again who trusts him, trusts that he is still a good player and can still deliver. Whether he will get that at West Ham after the start he's had. I I doubt it. He does seem like a really yeah. like Just from really his nice lead stage, seems like a really good bloke, very, very down to earth, the sort of person that you do want to do really well. So I really like personally I really hope that he kicks on mm. from like what is obviously and he would agree a low point in his career so far, probably. The question is where does he go? I think is the is the next question because I don't think he goes to the Euros. Yeah. So it's about rebuilding. And I think it just shows the risk that every footballer takes when they take that next step up. Mm. Like overall, yeah. he's he's a victim of yeah. the fact that he's playing behind the best de defensive midfielder yeah. in the world. Um and there was also an English defensive midfielder that was really highly rated yeah. that took the and next got the right best move, move got yeah. the got the right move and it's sort of yeah i think it's at this point where i'm like we've got to stop going after players like this because like the press i think are starting to vilify him more than they are support him or yeah. and it's actually he's becoming a figure of the maguire figure like if he goes sort of we hate him whereas actually it's He's an English footballer who could help us out in a mm. position where, look, we're playing with Main, who is who's really good, but is only 18 years old. We sort of do want him to be at the Euros in tip-top form, but we have this thing in the media in England where we just go after these players. Whereas actually, yeah. I think what we should be doing is sort of rooting for him a little bit more because he'll get battered by fans now everywhere he goes because the pressure is on him. Um, so yeah, we're rooting for Calvin. Yeah. Go and watch our um, episode of Unfiltered with him as well. Oh he, yeah, he great in. plug. I'd You've forgotten got to plug about it. that. You've got to plug yeah. it when you get the chance. Yeah, great. He's got actually got an incredible story. Just yeah, it's very interesting, and he does come across very well. Yeah, he yeah. does. Go and watch it. Check um, it out. It's on the YouTube channel. And to be honest, just lastly on his outburst, I honestly think fans should expect that of players. Yeah. Like you are, they're, they're humans, yeah. and especially when someone's at such a low point in their life, 
if the fan now turns around and be like, oh, he was like, he disrespected me and he can't do the pressure. I think that's all. You just... called him useless, mate. What more? Yeah. Like, what yeah. do you want back? Like you, you called, like you have to understand, football is his life. He's worked for years and years and years to then be called useless as something he's worked years and years. And for. he's actually really, really good at it yeah. as well. I was just going to say, the guy that called him useless, how many goals would he get in this Man City side? But Calvin <laughs> Phillips can't get in the Man City side. So <laughs> Has Calvin Phillips scored relevant. any goals in yeah, the Man exactly. City side? <laughs> It wasn't just Rice and Rodri who went head to head last weekend. It was also Pep Guardiola and Mikel Arteta. So we decided to ask the Arsenal fans if they would take Pep Guardiola as their manager for a season. Not, not a chance. Not a chance in hell. No. Nah. Mate, listen, yeah, Pep, he's coming to the end of the line. It's like a tube he station. <laughs> you know, he, he's going to Cockfosters. You know what I mean? Arteta's going to like Heathrow. You know, he's a dizzy line. Whereas Pep, he's like the Northern line. It's, it's coming to the end. Pep, fair enough. He's done what he's done. But it's Arteta's time now. Pep's the best, Pep's the best. But I do love Arteta. But the thing is, there's nothing to say that Arteta one day can't be better or as good yeah. as Pep. But I think, yeah, here and now, you, everyone would take Pep, I think, in the world. You've got to look at where Arteta was when he brought, took on the Arsenal team to where he's taken the club now. And if you follow the trajectory of where we're going, we're in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. We're in the title race once again for the second season in a row. You gonna take Pep? No. Could Pep have done it with what Arteta's had to do it? With like in terms of money and signings and stuff. Could could if Pep come to Arsenal when Wenger left, could he have done what Arteta's done in that space of time? Mikel's just started his game. You know, he's still got a lot to learn. Pep's kind of, you know, he's leaving what, City at the end of next season? His contract runs out anyway, and I think he's made hints that he's leaving. So I think he's accepted that he's probably you know, finished club management or done as much as he can do. And you know, when you have a manager who's kind of reached his peak and like done everything he's achieved to do, he's got nothing more to play for. Whereas Mikel's got the fight and drive to persevere and keep uh, keep achieving more and more because yeah, he's got the ce his ceiling is so high. This is his first job and um, who knows where he's going to take us, but I think right to the top. Yeah, he is, he's provided me some of the best moments of, of my life, literally. So yeah, I love him. If they said he can have Pep just for a season. Nah. No, <laughs> no, I'd love, I'd love now, Mikel, all the way. I'd take him, however, I just feel, I know this is me saying I wouldn't take him, I would take him, of course, but I think he lacks just playing for the club that he knows what it kind of is of Arteta does, but I would take him, yeah. My thoughts are he would win the title with Arsenal, so I think there's a lot of um, rose-tinted answers there. Like, it's a, there's a lot of love for Mikel Arteta, yeah. but I think Pep would win would almost guarantee a title anywhere he goes that has Is a decent okay? budget. I'm sorry. I don't think it's an awful shout. What? I, I, I understand I, think... I understand why Arsenal fans are saying that they, they wouldn't. And to be honest, I'm, I'm not 100% sure that I would swap Arteta for him, but I don't disagree with the idea that Pep could win the league with Arsenal. Yeah, I why? think he would almost yeah. guarantee it. I think everywhere he's gone, he's yeah. won titles. I think Arsenal would give him a decent budget. So I think... If you were asking me, like, without any emotion, which I don't, I, I like Mikel Arteta, without any emotion on Arsenal, I think you'd probably take Pep Guardiola. I think it's interesting when you ask a question like this, how much love there is for a manager, where it's like, look, Pep Guardiola is the best manager in the world. Mikel Arteta looks like he might be one of the best managers in the world, is in that conversation at the moment. It's like, would you guarantee it? with the best or someone that technically has only won FA Cups. He's done a great job with Arsenal, but I'm sort of like, I think I pro probably would try and guarantee it as best I could because yeah. Arsenal are at this risky point where if they don't do it in the next year or so, do they lose Mikel Arteta anyway? I think there's, someone said to me last week, the flip side of this is that Arteta could be tempted by City when Pep goes. Mm. Because yeah. like, there's a loyalty thing yeah. where it's like, how much can you, like, how much can you trust? Like, this shows that my like, my trust has been broken in the past um, <laughs> by several Samson players and managers. But how much can you trust loyalty in football? If Arteta was just like swayed by, yeah, a and move, having, having been brought through as as Pep's assistant yeah. as well. I mean, I I think Pep would be successful at Arsenal. I don't think Arsenal fans would swap him. I don't think I would swap him. Yeah, purely because again, as a Liverpool fan, seeing someone who has that connection with the club. You look at Manchester United when Fergie left. They have struggled to find anyone yeah. who understands the club in the right way, 
who understands the fans and can connect with the fans in that way. Ten Hag hasn't done it. Who knows who's who's going to be next when he inevitably gets gets sent on his way? Arsenal fans probably see Arteta as that. That figure. You know, they they yeah. they managed it. They managed it with him at basically the first time of asking. And yeah, he hasn't won absolutely everything, but Arsenal are the strongest side that they have been in a long, mm. long time. Um, you know, even if they don't win the league this year, they have in the last two seasons cemented themselves as a team who can challenge. Arteta is young. Arteta has come from the sort of same school of thought as Pep. I don't see why Arteta can't go on and be massively successful mm. as Arsenal manager. Do you think Pep, both of these, do you think Pep could take Arsenal to the Champions League? Yes. Arteta, in fairness, has actually got them to that this, level. This, this is what I was about to say. In fairness, I do believe that Pep would win the Champions League with Arsenal, but I also think that Arteta could probably do it. Yeah. And they, they, you know, they've got a good shout this year. Yeah. That's, I generally don't believe that Pep would do well. I, I, personally don't, I personally think Arsenal, they're not amazing in terms of like, we, like, Football wise, they're very like boring to watch. Whoa. No, sorry, no. I, I against it, big teams, then they yeah, haven't against been great. Big teams, against, Gem's uh, vein on his forehead yeah. is just absolutely no, exploded. Have, by the way, like Gem off camera has to admit that against big teams, they struggle a lot. I don't know. I don't know. I'd love to get Gem's opinion on this. He's sat yeah. too far away. He's, do you want to jump? He's jumping at the come bit. In. I think squeeze yourselves in. Yeah, yeah. Go on, Gem. Gem yeah. making his football trending debut. Yeah. Go on then, Gem. I just, I, you just, you just said we. Arsenal are not a good team to watch. We've got the most goals in the league. Yeah. We've got the least goals conceded. We've gone, we've won at home against Liverpool, won at home against City, yeah. drawn away at Anfield and City. I saw a stat about no other manager has stopped, or has prevented both Liverpool and City winning in both fixtures, like in the last like 10 years. No one's done it against Klopp and Pep. Wow. Let me tell like, you why I think they're boring to watch because I could tell I think, you where Saka's going to go. Every single time <laughs> I could tell you the pass that Odegaard's going to make, I could tell you, like, it's so predictable. No, I, so I just, pre-Dubai, so again, the mystical trip to Dubai, pre-Dubai, I didn't actually enjoy watching Arsenal that much this season. I thought they were hard to beat and they, they but I did think they were a bit, um, not even robotically, just like, they weren't as exciting as last season, in, 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 like relatively, relatively speaking. I would then say since Dubai, they've been great to watch again. And they, they've refound like a bit of the magic and like they look enjoyable to play for we and to watch about. as well. Yeah, I would say that's literally it. And look, the City, the City game is difficult because they turned up in a low block and it was just... Boring. It was boring. Like overall, it was. There is no debate that there was. It was a boring game. But I don't mind that from a team. Like criticism of Arsenal in the past has actually been, oh, they, the problem with Arsenal is they try and walk it into exactly. the net. Like they they play this like sexy football, but then Look, Stoke I mean, go and score two long throws against them. Exactly. So I think that actually what Arteta's done this year is a an incredible achievement to make Arsenal hard to beat. But I also think pre Dubai. I would have sort of called them a little bit duller than last year. But look, they've scored a shit ton of goals since, and that's been since this the year, trip. Basically. What, since what's whatever, in the water? I, I, whatever juice Mikel Arteta was putting in Ben White's yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. that's incredible a fact. Yeah. Look, first half of the season, we didn't look like we were great going forward, but we looked solid. And yeah. We looked like we found a way to grind results out. Like towards the business end of the season, like when we are going forward more, we're pushing for results emotionally, things get a bit higher and that's been a criticism of Arsenal mm. as well. I just think we've got that in our back pocket now, that defensive stability. We know we can lean back on that. I believe Odegaard when he said we didn't go there to play in such a deep block, but I think we had to react to what was, yeah. to what was happening. And this whole thing about it being a boring game and what was that tweet about like, for the neutral, this was a catastrophic game or something. It was. Wait, I don't I care. Fell asleep. No, I don't care. <laughs> I asleep. We came, we, we've come away from City with four points. We've come away from Liverpool with four points. It's a much better point for Arsenal than it's, it is for Man City. Yeah. I, I don't better. like what yeah, the neutral yeah. wants is City to pump us 4-0. That, that narrative no. can go around. around. Oh, I, want, no, I wanted what, a, what's that? that? That's I wanted a 3-2 Arsenal Arsenal win. That was my like you actual you see, Arsenal fans' line. victim mentality is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Who, who ever said that? To be fair, people do team. hate Arsenal fans. Overall, exactly. most hated fan the base in the league. The can't handle that we've got our backbone again. And then we're <laughs> back. We're fucking back. <laughs> 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 oh, the oh, the anti-Arsenal narrative. That's my piece. That's and we're great. winning the league. It's do, happening. Do you know what it is? Oi, Jeb. That is some. Yeah, well done, Jeb. Well done. 
Jeff. <laughs> Who the fuck was that guy? Yeah. Where did you get him? Does he work here? When we did our combined 11 for the game last week, and I, I said yes. that I would have had... Um, I said I'd, I'd have had Diaz over Saliba. Incidentally, Saliba and Gabriel defended very well at the weekend. They were by far the best players on the pitch. The thing with Arsenal and Arteta, I think, and why Arsenal fans would go for Arteta over Pep, is that they are in such an exciting position in that, yes, they've only been doing it for a couple of years. My argument about picking Diaz yeah. and picking mainly City players was that they've been far more successful for far longer. They've been dominating for four or five years. Saliba is one of the best centre-backs in the world currently. He will be one of the best centre-backs in the world for the next five, ten years, probably. But City have done it for longer. I think with Arsenal and Arteta at the minute, they are probably the one club that can be most excited about where they are heading. Liverpool, there is an uncertainty. Yeah. Pep yeah. is winding down. Probably City aren't the best team. They're, they're not the best version. He's of quite them. quit it. <laughs> City aren't the best version of themselves that they have been. Yeah. When you look at the work that Arteta has put into this Arsenal team and how they are performing now, I don't. I do not think that it is a stretch to think that in five years they could be a really, really, really good football yeah. team. Do you think Pep could do the same job with the same facilities, with the same budget, with the same backing? At Arsenal. At Arsenal. Well, this is actually, team. this is actually, I think great managers should, to earn like Hall of Fame. So you have like a legitimate Hall of Fame sort of in football where it is, you earn the right to be in there. I think they, all managers and all players should ha have to go to a team that is a bit shit yeah. and prove yeah, their yeah, metal. Yeah. It's I've, just I've, like... I've always said, and it's one of the things that you can level at Pep quite easily is that he has always yeah. managed great teams. And in quite a few cases, he's inherited great teams. Mm. It's like, you know, he, he won everything at Barca, he won everything at Bayern, he's won everything at City. I want to see Pep Guardiola at fucking Norwich. Yeah. And if he can do a job at Nor exactly. Norwich, I will concede that he is one of the because greatest of all time. Like every team that Pep's gone to, and I don't want to sound like the cliche, typical Twitter football fan, has been unreal. Yeah. Like Man City's first ever game with Pep was Edison in goal, Danilo, Walker, Laporte, Zinchenko, Gundogan, Bernardo Silva, David yeah. Silva, Prime Sterling. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the argument is levelled at Pep that he has inherited great teams. He has earned the right because of the job he did at Barcelona where he sort of built, rebuilt Barcelona yeah. um, to basically the most aesthetically pleasing football yeah, team in ever, history in yeah. my opinion um and then also hugely successful while being aesthetically pleasing um so yeah i would this was fun i actually yeah think it was Je great i actually think gem has enhanced the show no end there arsenal man city are famous for amazing football but even more notorious for really shit atmospheres Bobby. we asked the arsenal Manchester city fans who has the most overrated atmosphere this season let's get into it when they're losing, Liverpool. Yeah, I, I say when say they're that. losing, Anfield. It is a oh no, Stamford Bridge. I say worst, awful, generally awful. Stamford Bridge. Yeah, it's terrible. Well, why? What's so bad about it? It's quiet, library, nothing, Very nothing tall, there. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's because they're shit, but <laughs> Etihad all day, all day treble winners. You can't even hear them sing on TV. Liverpool is the most overrated away. Obviously, when they play City, it's always hyped up. I get that, but sing you never walk alone, and it'll just go quiet for a little bit. We went Chelsea earlier this year, and. Uh, I mean, like, when we equalised, it just went dead silent in there. And to be honest, before the game, they're doing all sorts of nonsense, to be quite yeah. honest. So it's just it's very tough. behind a camera with, like, a, a sort of cardboard sign it. saying, please wave. It's yeah, false. Yeah, yeah. Joke. It's a joke. That's definitely Old Trafford, isn't it? Yeah, that's overrated, yeah. They say, yeah, they've got the best atmosphere, but it isn't the best atmosphere. No yeah. chance, no. City's home atmosphere is good on the big nights. We're the same as Liverpool. On a, on a quieter night, we're just, we're a working class fan base. Like, we struggle to make the games, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Madrid was class last year, so was Bayern Munich. But in the lower games, we are a bit poor at home and more, more than happy. But today, it will be bouncing. It does lack some atmosphere in games I've been to. I always think uh, away games, uh, the City fans are more vocal when you uh, yeah. away games than that. Great away support. Uh, great, yeah, every time I've been away games, they're just constantly singing throughout the game and that. Yeah. But sometimes it is quiet here, but um, I don't say I think it's any worse than any other teams. The grounds in, in the league, you know. Some shouts there. I think it's quite easy to dig to dig at Liverpool. Liverpool has been better. I think there's a wider conversation about atmospheres generally that actually, mm -hmm. because you get so many day trippers and you get so many tourists, yeah. particularly when a club is doing well, like Liverpool in, in the recent seasons where they have been more successful, 
of course the atmosphere has suffered. I understand why people say it, but ironically, this season it's actually been mm. much better. And I feel like the clock situation has definitely like a hundred percent it's galvanized it yeah. massively so yeah much. since Klopp has announced he's retiring there's yeah. been an element of like there's a lift yeah. just generally where it's like we've got to make yeah. the final if you're not going to absolutely special. go for it for 90 minutes give your ticket to somebody else i think city is a very easy obvious starting point that for all the trophies they win and all the good football they play they are the number one aren't they I that, i'd say that out of the big teams in the league they're the worst atmosphere i don't think they're overrated in direct response yeah. to the question it's they're not overrated because it's actually pretty accepted that it's like the empty had it's a bit shit like <laughs> yeah um i think chelsea's not a bad shout for a bad atmosphere man city, man city they just want to get anyone and everyone in when i was at uni i had a uni days discount to get man city tickets <laughs> yeah you know how mental that is like yeah, I that is right, like champions league tickets last season in the knockout stages that were on sale the day off for like 20 quid yeah. they still but they're, a club, they're a club that has just grown out of they've gro grown from being a team that were never competing for European football, let alone titles, to being on these huge stages. And you can't grow a fan base yeah. like anything other than organically. Yeah. Um, otherwise, like overall, you do get these like plastic fans. But actually, weirdly, there aren't many city fans in London that I know personally. Like it has it hasn't been the like United effect where mm. United fans sort of the like the long running joke of like it's the train back Pop to London is as busy as anywhere else. But yeah, I, th I think Liverpool is probably a fair shout for most overrated at atmosphere because having been there, like Southampton isn't a big game for Liverpool, admittedly, but having been there for those games, the atmosphere is not that incredible, especially if the away team gets on top, which occasionally we have. Um, <sighs> but then I think Old Trafford is, I actually think Old Trafford is quite good. Um, when they're winning, United fans get, behind their team very yeah. quickly it could it's theirs is like a bit more toxic where it goes one way or the other i think but i would actually say the two best in my opinion that i've seen have been arsenal in the last couple of years post arteta yeah um the whole north london forever thing is a bit cheesy in my opinion but it seems to work and st james's park oh mm, st james's undoubtedly park. rated yeah. as the best atmosphere in the league full stop where I went there for the League Cup semi-final last year, that place was bouncing. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was so like I was there as an away fan. I was like, "Fuck, this is actually like an experience just being in this ground." Like I didn't have any expectation we were going to win, so I was just there like, "Take what you can from this." And they were bouncing that first like fifteen minutes. It was deafening. Mm -hmm. I've never experienced an atmosphere like that. So I think Spurs have a good atmosphere as well. Spurs have a great atmosphere. Yeah. And who's Fact. your and who's your most overrated? most overrated i think is probably still liverpool because it's like famous it's like hard for them to match up to it week in week out so i think in terms of overrated you'd I'd probably say liverpool even though i think they do have games where it is off the charts i've just not been to one of those games so when i was there it was a bit like, mm, like a bit meh but that's because they were playing in a fifth round fa cup tie against the kids exactly yeah. exactly yeah. so which, which and it's lost. hard to get up for like games week in week out so yeah it'd be um, overrated will have to be Man City. The one that I think's underrated and was probably the best atmosphere that I went to was Upton Park, West Ham's old stadium. Yeah. That was kids for quid, so good. Got all the hooligans in and just <laughs> went wild. Like one of the best stadiums I've been at. Like it was nice and close to the pitch. My favorite yeah. stadiums are the one that's like super close yeah. to the pitch. Like not like Man City double double boarding their advertising yeah. boards. Oh, like, that's yeah. awful, by the way. I was, talk, I was talking yeah. about that with my dad at the weekend. I was like... Oh, the next season, it'll be three. And the yeah. season after, it'll be four. It's it's, yeah. it's crazy. It's horrible. It, it's, it's mental. Yeah, the, is, the bowl style stadiums. Like The, the oh, ultimate fine. example is like the Olympic Stadium, a London Stadium, yeah. where you're just far away from the pitch. Yeah. Spur, that's why Spurs have got it so right with yeah. theirs because it, it, there still is that like tightness Closeness. to the pitch, well, the, close the, knit. The, 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 um, the, the contour of the stands at Spurs is incredible. You could be up mm. you can be up at the back and you still feel as though you are right on top of it, right in the mix. Same with Stamford Bridge to be fair. Their away their away end is super steep. So like even though you're Rose Ed or whatever, 
you're still right. I think that my favourite away end is Stamford Bridge, yeah. even though their atmosphere isn't incredible. I mean, if anyone's enjoying going to Stamford Bridge, it's away fans. Yeah, true. It? Definitely this season. <laughs> that's a fact. Guys, that's been another episode of Football Trending. Next week, Hunter sadly is going to be back. So stay tuned. Who? Mate, does he get back in with Jem in the fold? That's yeah, the question. Yeah. yeah. We've played ourselves into a bit of a Connor Bradley, Trent Alexander Arnold yeah. situation here. Yeah. I don't think Hunter's guaranteed to get his place back. Yeah, student becomes the master. We'll see. So make sure to like, follow, comment subscribe, all that stuff, and we'll see you next week.